Hello and welcome to the VBA Air Handling. Hi, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers. And today you're gonna learn everything you need to know about how to handle errors in VBA. In this quick training, you're gonna become an Excel expert. So I hope you'll hang on because I've got a lot to share with you. If you do like these trainings, I create these VBA basic trainings each and every Saturday. While our comprehensive application development, we create every single Tuesday. So you get the best of both worlds. And of course, our templates are always free. All you need to do is click the link down below and look for the word download, put your name, email, and I'll make sure to get that sent over right away to you. These templates are always open, unlocked, and available for you to study, customize, improve as you wish. I just ask a few things. If you could just subscribe to the channel, that would be really great. Comment below since I do respond to each and every comment every single morning. Along with my coffee, I make sure to give you attention because you are very important to me. Also click that notification icon bell. That will ensure that you get these trainings each and every week. All right, so let's get started because I've got a lot to share with you and I want to make it as simple as possible for you so that you can learn a lot and I'm happy to share with you. I've got a cheat sheet for you right here. It's going to share with you information about the types of errors you encounter, about how to deal with those errors, and we're going to go through step by step. So if you are new to VBA, we're going to be working inside the VBA editor. To get to that, we're going to go into the developer. If you don't see this developer tab available to you, all you need to do is right click anywhere here and customize the ribbon and just make sure that developer is selected there. Once inside the developer tab, you'll find this visual basic here. You can also use a shortcut Alt F11. And that's gonna do you something this called the VBA editor. Inside here, what we wanna do is we're gonna write some macros, create some errors and have some fun. To do that, we're gonna do that all inside a module. To create a module, you can right click anywhere on here. You can click here. All we need to do is insert a module. What that's gonna do is create this module. If we wanna give this module a name, we can use the properties. If you don't see the properties anywhere, of course, you can just click right here, properties or F4 is a shortcut. We're gonna give it a name. We're just gonna call it error handling. Now for this training, it might not be so important, but when you have multiple modules, you do want to name them, it's possible. So let's do this and let's create our first bug. Sub test error handling. So we're gonna run a test. First thing, let's go ahead and dimension a variable. Now there's three different types of errors that we're going to go over. The first is a syntax error. Now syntax error is a type when you're missing something in your code, your code doesn't exist. Another is a runtime error. And that means when the code is running, it encounters some type of an error. And the other is some type of logic or mismatch error. So we're gonna go over each one of those and I'm gonna create each one of those types of errors right now so you can understand how they are handled. So let's jump back into our VBA editor and we're gonna dimension a variable. We're gonna dimension our test value as let's do integer or we can do long let's do long it's a whole number that's a little bit simpler now what i want to do is i'm going to set that value so we're going to do the test value equals we'll do a string which is incorrect right we haven't defined it as a string so i want to create this error test string okay we don't need to do anything else with that what i'm going to do is i'm going to use f8 and step into the code Right, we can also use stepping into the code right here. So once we're in that, we're gonna go through and we see we've got a type mismatch error. And why is it? If we click debug, it's gonna test on this. And the reason is we've defined the test value as a long. So it's supposed to be, it's looking for the number. However, it is returning a string. So it's looking for a whole number, but we've returned it as a string. If I were to change this to a whole number or I were to change this to a string, it would of course revert. So this is what we call a logic error or a mismatch. Error is the logic of the code where the code doesn't produce as expected. It's looking for a whole number, but I'm giving it a string. So this is the kind of error that happens as we run the code. So let's continue on. Let's make this a string and then we'll reset it and we see that there's no error. So if I change it, we see that it goes through just fine, right? We can debug dot print the test value so that we can see that it does produce it. We're going to look in the immediate window here, display that immediate window, bring it up here and then we'll run the macro here. We can get rid of what's in there, no need for that. And then continue on and we see that we have the test string. So we see how 
we have the correct value and there's no error. So let's go over another type of error. Let me remove the quotation marks from the beginning of that and we see that it appears in red. And if I try to use F8 or try to run the code even before stepping into the code, we're going to get a syntax error. This is the type of error that's going to be found and it will not run any of the code no matter where this ends up because there's something wrong with our code. So we see here we have a syntax error. Errors in the syntax of the code are missing parentheses or mistyped keywords. So that's important. We have to understand that that is a possibility, that type of error. The third type and final type of error, let's just say change this to long. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do the test value. Let's do 10 divided by zero. So dividing by zero, we are not allowed to do. We're going to reset this. Now, if we use F8 here, we go through the code. As soon as we get to this, we're going to get a division error. So this is a runtime error. The error happens as it's running through and it's a division by zero. So when we debug it, we see that it's going to be on this line and it produces an error since we cannot divide by zero. So this is a runtime error. Errors that occur while the code is executing, such as division by zero or accessing non-existent objects, right? So if I change this something like a test value or something, we have different objects that don't exist. It's going to create this error. So those are the three different types of errors you can run into. So how do we handle those errors? How do we work with them or how do we avoid them? Obviously, we can update the code to do that. So let's create this error and let's use an on error. So avoiding these errors, we have some options. So if we continue, let's keep it the way it was. And we have different error handling techniques. We have on error resume next. So let's focus on that. And on error resume next, when we type that out, on error resume next. And we're basically telling it to ignore the error. So when we use F8 and we tab through that, it is going to ignore the error. The test value is zero and debug and print. So we see that it is zero. So the error was completely ignored. The test value is empty because of the error and it is ignored. However, when we use on error resume next, every error after that point is also going to be ignored. So let's try this again. Test value equals 20 divided by zero. So we're going to create an additional error and see how that is handled. As we move through the code, we see the first one is ignored. The second one is also ignored. However, what if you just want to ignore the first one? What we can use is on error go to zero. So we do on error go to zero. And what this does is it's going to reset the error. Reset error check. So it's going to check for errors again. It will bypass the first one, but not the second one. So we can use F8 as we move through the first ones exist. It's going to reset the error. It's going to debug and print, and it's going to catch the second one and the debug is going to open. So we can see how the on error resume next and on error go to zero work. Great. So we know if we click debug, we understand how that's going to work on the second line. However, what if we want to skip a certain instance when there's an error code, we want a certain event skipped. So what we can do is we can use on error go to. So we can do something like on error go to next line. So we can define this as anything we want. So next part, next line, whatever. It doesn't matter. Next line. So then what we need to do is we need to define what is next line and where it is. So the error is here. So what we can do here is we can do something like next line like this. And now what it's going to do, it's going to skip this on air and it's going to go right to here. Actually, let's put it here. Let's say when there's an error, we don't want to debug it. We want to go to the next one. So here it's going to skip entirely this issue with the error and it's going to go to the next line. So we can comment this out so we can see now. Let's take a look at this. We'll use F8. So it's going to understand that on the next error, it's going to skip and it's going to go right to here. So we see the error occurs. It's going to skip this line and it's going to go straight to this line and it's the last one in the value. So we can see if I add a message box, message box here, we'll do the test value, which is going to be zero. It's because I want to show you how it skips completely the line. So that's going to help us. And it's very important when we're doing some coding. So it skips this, it goes directly here. And then the next one is value. And you see our message box is zero. Great. So we see how we can use on air go to to skip a certain event. Perfect. So how would we use these? So let's take a look back in our cheat sheet. So we have on air resume next. We have on air go to zero. We have on air go to label. We can also use custom air handles. I don't think we're we're going to get to in this. So how do we use this logic? We can also determine information about a given error. So how do we do that? 
Well, what we can do is we can find some information about that. So let's say we do on air, resume, next. And so on this one, we're going to skip this air, right? Because it's skipped here. It can continue on. It will bypass the air, won't report it. And what we're going to do is I want to determine the value of it. So I want some more information about that. So how do we do that? We can do debug, and then we can do something about air dot, and maybe we want the description of it. So this will give us a description about the air, and it'll put it in the debug. So we can remove this here, we don't need that. And then we can continue on. So let's take a look at what that might produce. So here it's gonna counter an error. Here it's gonna tell us we want information about the error description. And we see that the error description is division by zero. Errors also have numbers associated with them, individual numbers, and I've got a cheat sheet on each one of those numbers so we can see that we've got information. So we can return the error number as well. And this is error number 11. On our cheat sheet here, we can see that error number 11 is division by zero. So we've got an entire error number along with the message and a description. So this could be helpful. So I've got them there all the way up. So we can get more information based on the error number and the error message, which can be quite helpful. We can also create breakpoints in the execution, which allow us to inspect variables. So we can use that. We can use these breakpoints here. So if I create a breakpoint right here at this point, and then what we can do is let's continue back on again. And we see we've created a breakpoint here, which is gonna stop at that point. So that means, let's do this. If I run this code entirely, it's gonna stop at this breakpoint right here. So we can also create those, which can be very helpful in working with bugs. So how would we use this in a real life, right? So in a real life, maybe we want to test for some condition. So let's take a look at this. Let's create a shape here. I'm gonna insert a shape inside here. And we can use sheet one, it's fine, it doesn't matter. And I'm gonna give this a sheet a name. So I'm going to call this test shape. And now what I wanna do is I wanna look in sheet one and I wanna see if this shape exists. Let's do that one more time, test shape, and hit enter. Okay, so now this is called test shape. So a lot of times when we do programming, we wanna know if a shape exists. So we're gonna do dimension, let's do this. Dimension here, we'll do the test shape as a shape. Now what we want to do is I want to set the test shape equal to sheet one dot shapes and we'll just do test shape first we're going to run this so that there's no errors just so we can see and let's do uh, something like debug dot print and then we'll do test shape dot name okay just so we can have something like that so we're going to run it and we see that it runs just fine it returns the test shape name but let's say i don't know if the shape exists on that how can we run a test so let's take a look at this so let's say we rename it let's say the shape exists but it's in a different name but i want to know if it exists in this name so let's run this if i want to test this to see if test shapes exist which it does not and i run this we're going to get a runtime error right i really want to be able to trap this error simply to understand if the shape exists or not i don't want to create an error just to be able to test it so how can we use on air resume next and on air go to zero we can do something like this which i do in almost every single one of my application developments so what we can do is we can write in on error resume next and then instead of here we'll put on air go to zero on error go to zero so this will result in no errors so if we run this macro nothing will happen and that's what we want but what i want to do is i still want to know if this shape exists so we can do something like this if not test shape is nothing that means it exists the double negatives cancel each other out then message box shape exists else message box shape does not exist great so we have that so let's run that now we'll run the macro and we see that shape does not exist at least in that spelling however if we were to change the name to the correct name which is test shape we we're going to see how shape exists so we have now so we basically used error trapping on air resume next and on error go to zero to test to see whether a shape exists. Now, I often use this within the find too. Another way is to use the find. So let's say I'm looking for a specific number in this range, and I want to know if it is found. This range here, let's go ahead and view it so we can get the columns here, and we'll view the headings here. So I'm gonna look inside F6 all the way through F8. 
18 and I want to look for a specific number in that range. So this is another common use of air trapping to locate something. So let's just do F6 through F18. I want to look for a number. So we're going to dimension. Let's do here found number as a long so we can find the row. Let's say we want to extract the row on it and we're going to set found number as so we'll do found number equals sheet one dot range and the range of course once again we're looking inside f6 through f18 so f6 through f18 let's say i am going to use the find command which is going to result in an error if it is not found which we cannot have so i'm going to look for let's say number eight number eight doesn't exist here so let's take a quick look inside here and we'll just keep it very simple for now i'm just going to look for that whole number and i'm going to look for the number eight and I'm going to look in Excel values and then I want Excel whole. So we're looking for and I want to return the row number. So we're going to remove the on error zoom next. We're going to let this create an error because the whole number eight is not found in whole at least. And then what we're going to do is we're going to run this and we're going to see that it creates an error. It says object variable with variable not set. So we see that the variable has not been set, meaning this found number is not found. That row is not found. So how do we fix this? We want to look for it. We don't want to create an error each time. Let's take a look. Now, just to ensure that it is working, we're going to debug it. We see that it is set on that line. To make sure that it is working, we're going to look for number nine, and we're going to make sure that it does return the actual row here. So we're going to put in nine, and then we'll just do something like debug, dot print, and then the found number. So we know what row it has been found on. If we run this, we see that it is found on row 10. So we know that it is working when it is found, but when it is not found, it will return an error, which we don't want. So we do need to trap those errors. So we're going to continue with this. And now what we can do is simply say here something like if found number equals zero, then message box not found else message box found on row and then we'll use and found number okay so here we can use this error trapping to let us know that it has been found on row 10 so we know that if we change the number to eight which is not found at least in the whole number and we run that we're using the debugging print to say that it has not been found so we can avoid errors and still use this error checking to let us know exactly so it's very very helpful we could also use a skip to for example we could use something like on error go to let's say skip error and what this can do is the message will run out here and we can do exit sub and then we can do skip error which is going to let us know and then message box number not found so what this will do is we'll skip everything else we can run it and we see that number not found so what it's basically doing as we use f8 we see that it's going to create the error it's zero so what it's going to do is it knows that anytime there's an error to skip all the way down so it skips everything and it goes directly down to this point and then it presents us with the message box so here we've used error trapping to really help us isolate these errors and we can use them in our code we do want to make sure that we do use on air go to zero because that's going to reset it that means if there's any additional bugs it will skip out so for example if we do this or something and we do create a row we do want to make sure that they're found obviously this is a you know a syntax error so it's going to be found right away if we do that however we can see other ways to do that so that it's going to help us so very very important if we have a variable that's not working it's going to report it right away so that's really some help on the three different types of errors that you can run into whether they're syntax runtime or mismatch and how to use on air resume next on air go to a specific label and on air go to zero to work with these labels within given applications and the additional error handling techniques so you can use this cheat sheet to help you not only work with errors but to remove them and work with them so that they can be very helpful to you so i hope this training has helped you on vba error handling if you do like this vba training and want to help us out i've got an incredible course by daniel strong that is the ultimate vba course it's a 30 hour course taught by my mentor daniel strong incredible vba course to help you become fantastic with vba and build applications all right thanks so much for your continued support and we'll see you next week